Joining me now is Illinois Democratic Congressman and member of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, Luis Gutierrez. Uh, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us. Good to have you. Thank so, you. What exactly happened yesterday with Chuck Schumer? Look, um, for me, it's pretty simple. Um, what I say and how I express myself today with you before this camera and your audience, it's the same way I express myself when I'm in a private meeting. I'm not going to change. I think we need to be completely transparent in how we advocate for people. I think part of the problem that we have in Washington, D.C., is people really don't believe us. They think we say one thing in public and another thing behind closed doors. That's just not the case. The fact is that in the House of Representatives, Katie, um, under the leadership of Nancy Pelosi, uh, we were able to keep all the Democrats together to say, Here's our basic. It's not about shutting the government down. It's about saying, if you have a Republican agenda, a Republican proposal, and you don't want to include our ideals, our agenda, our vision of America, then get 218 votes. That's what they did in the House of Representatives. Unfortunately, in the Senate, once again, we find Democratic senators saying, mañana, so saying they threw, tomorrow. Do you, do you think they threw, and the, I've seen, threw them under the bus? Think, look. Here's what I believe. I believe that when you sit down with the president of the United States, less than 24 hours after he has revoked the legalization of 800,000 young people who are school teachers, who are doctors, who have come out of the shadows, who have been educated by our system, who have been to two, three background checks, and say to them, you're going to live in fear now. We're coming after you. We're allowing. Because, you know, DACA isn't like it expires, Katie, next March. Already 30,000 dreamers either have lost their DACA or didn't reapply because they don't feel that it's worth it. Do you have so confidence it's going to pass? It, we in, need to in, get it done right away. Do you have confidence, yes, though, Katie? since it's not getting done right now, that it, that it will pass in January? Here's what I believe. I believe that if we speak clearly to those in powerful positions about the needs of those that are being um, attacked by what can, I can only describe as a racist, misogynist, um, and xenophobic uh, administration, that we need to raise the bar to in defending them. And if we raise it, yes. Here's, I, I tweeted after the meeting, just so that we're clear, since now people want to talk about what was a private meeting, I shook Chuck Schumer's hand. And I told him I look forward to working with them. And I got on my Twitter account and I said, we're doing better today. Democrats are more on the same page now than they were before the meeting. I think that's what meetings should be, where people come, bring their visions of the future, and sometimes there is, there is a clash. And clashes aren't necessarily a bad thing. It kind of clears the air. Do you think the Democratic Party is taking advantage of the support of Hispanic Americans or... or, or or do you think that the Democratic Party has the, the interests of Hispanic, Hispanic Americans front and center? Wow. Katie, yes, in so many avenues, it does. In so many avenues, when it comes to health care, when it comes to the minimum wage, you know, wh when it comes to job training, when it comes to education, which is so important, when it comes to giving housing opportunities, absolutely. But on the core civil rights issue of the moment, immigrants, and immigrant reform, given the positions of Donald Trump, who says that Mexicans are murderers, rapists, and drug dealers, and we should get rid of them all. I mean, let's remember, that's the basis, it's foundation of his campaign. And when he says Mexicans, he means Latinos, he means all of us. And so I think that we need to be as responsive. So to answer your question, look, if we're going to take dreamers and we're going to extol their values and their contributions, and we're going to tell the world how importantly special they are, which I believe in the core of my heart, then we also have to defend them with the same kind of tenacity and with the same kind of, of rigor. And that's all I'm saying to Democrats. Don't take dreamers as we have to the 2012 and 2016 dreamers. We took them to the conventions and said, here they are. They're our best and our finest, and then let them down by joining Republicans and not allowing them to live in a free space and allowing them to, to get out of this hostage situation that they find themselves in and become citizens of the United States. Because those kids, Katie, 
are as American as my children in everything but a piece of paper. And just like my, this is Christmas, Katie. What did, what did anybody think you should do in a meeting days before Christmas? It's a holiday season of peace and harmony and family. And I want peace and harmony and, and family values for those immigrant families, too. Congressman, um, looking forward to the fight for DACA, fight for Dreamers, you're going to be a part of it. Uh, the president's going to be a part of it. Republicans are going to be a part of it. They're going to want to negotiate. They're going to want to get something for something. What would you be willing to give the Republicans or give this president uh, for protection for Dreamers? Is, is a wall part of the wall, funding for the wall, on the table, yeah. potentially? Yeah. Here's how I look at it, Katie. I don't negotiate with hostage takers. Uh, the Dreamers have already fulfilled all their requirements, all of them once, the vast majority of them twice. I mean, going through a criminal background check, going through an exhaustive background check, they've gone through it twice, tens of thousands of them three times. And I say, look, the president of the United States said, even Donald Trump said, they're great. And I'm going to do something special and important, something great for them, which he always says just about everything. So why can't he just keep his word at least on one thing while we know he consistently doesn't keep his word about so many other things? And I'm saying to Democrats, there's no reason to negotiate about this. Uh, it's about a budget deal, right? And within the constructs of a budget deal, why should we say to their, because this is what Republicans are going to want to do. They're going to want to end family reunification. They call it chain migration. These are the same Republicans that say they're for family values and for families and take pictures of themselves with their children and their wives and extol how great family members there are. You know where family also starts, I say to my Republican colleagues, in our immigration debate, keeping immigrant families together, the same way my family was kept together, the same way generations of immigrants from Ireland and Poland and Germany and Asia and Africa have been kept together. I want to keep those families together. Let's extol those family values. Congressman Luis Gutierrez. Congressman, thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Katie. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.